Hello, I'm Megan Keyes and I'm the house manager here at Double Dutch. Um, our house was built in 1898 as a double-sided mansion for two families. Um, so the double mansion has two addresses, 817 and 819 North Marshall Street. Um, the home was built for two families and they actually happen to be siblings. So their father, um, Charles Koffler or Keffler Sr. had a home on this property prior to um, this mansion being built. And when he died in 1897, his children inherited his estate. So they decided to raise his house and build what is now the Double Dutch. Um, on the south side of the house were two brothers, Charles Koffler Keffler Jr. and his brother Hugo. One was in real estate, one was a lawyer, and then their sister, Hermine or Hermine lived on the other side, on the north side of the house with her husband um, and two sons. So the north side of the house is slightly larger, which we will take a look at later at the parlor and then the private dining room as well. One interesting fact about Double Dutch is that it was built in 1898 and designed by architects Ferry and Class or Class, who were two of the most or the first classically trained architects in Wisconsin at that time. And they also did the Paps Mansion and the Milwaukee Public Central Library. Um, as I show you throughout a couple areas of the house, you will see original hardwood, the fireplaces, the tile. The craftsmanship at the time was quite amazing and uh, many original pocket doors that are still working. And to think that 122 plus years later, um, we still have the original finishings and these pocket doors are still working is quite amazing. So as you come in the south front entrance of the house, you will be in the main hallway and you can see some of the original pocket doors here, which are now sealed off. Um, as I will show you um, the, the original living space for the south side of the house for the two brothers is now a king suite. So you can see the original door with the original hardware, which was flipped around to add our modern hardware. Every room has a keypad. So you, when you check in online, you get your key code sent to you and you enter the room that way. And we always let you know when the room was last stayed in and last cleaned for your safety and comfort. So as we enter into our king suite, you will see an original fireplace. We have five fireplaces in the house, all unique and different, um, but similar aesthetic with these columns and the engravings. I can show you up close, the detail is quite amazing. And the fact that the original tile is in this wonderful of condition after 122 years is quite wild. You can even see in the fireplace the etchings and even this intricate design as well. So we have a little living space here. And then as you go through to the king bedroom area, you will see another pocket door with original hardware that still works. So you can close off the bedroom and the living area. So all of our bedrooms do have the custom headboards, side tables, beautiful local artwork in every room. So right now we are at the south front of the house. And you can see here, the pocket door is sealed off, but you can still see what was. And that's what you could see on the in the hallway, those two pocket doors. Behind the other pocket door in the hallway is now a brand new bathroom. And our king suite is fully ADA accessible. You can see our beautiful custom tile design.
custom steel towel racks, our beautiful mirrors, and floor to ceiling subway tile in all of our shower and bathtubs. Here on the south side of the house, we have a sitting room, which ha contains both of our first floor guest rooms, which we have two. We already saw the king suite. And then we also have a room at the back of the building that was originally the kitchen for the south side of the house. So it's now turned into a classic queen bedroom. So let's take a look inside. This room has parts of the original butler's pantry. In many old homes, you'll see these. And then as you enter through that area, we'll enter the guest room. So as I mentioned, this was originally the kitchen. So this paneling that you see throughout is original, as well as the windows. So we have our Queen bed, beautiful Milwaukee artwork, beautiful modern bathroom, again with the custom tile, custom steel towel racks, and our floor to ceiling subway tile, beautiful high ceilings. What's unique about this room is it has the original dumbwaiter compartment so this was used to send food up to the second and third floors. The room right above um, this room actually has the original dumbwaiter compartment, which is now a closet. And we actually have the original dumbwaiter, which I will show you. So here in our basement, we actually have the original dumbwaiter here. And you can see the whole system. It's really important to us to preserve the history and to keep anything that was original to the house. We have an original little entryway bench here. As you enter the south side of the house, you'll see the stairs up to the second floor and beautiful original hardwood banisters. And then we will find a little secret closet here. Which is now a little under the stair bathroom. As we leave the south side of the house to get over to the north side of the house on the first floor, we're going to use this arch doorway, which has another one of my favorite things in the house, is this doorknob, which is quite beautiful. So as we pass through our arch doorway, you will see our parlor with beautiful hand-painted walls by Colleen Drew, as well as additional gold leaf ceiling design. We have the only original handrail of the house. So this is the main staircase going up to the second floor. And then this beautiful original hardwood that has been fully preserved from 1898. So in our private dining room, we have one of the original fireplaces, which we have five of in the building. You can see our hand painted walls. Those were done by a local artist, Colleen Drew. And we have our original built-in with the tempered glass. And then uh, Colleen Drew also did this 
ceiling work in gold leaf. And then as you can see, she made it look as to peel back what was originally there, which is the original wallpaper, which is a raised tin and quite exquisite and beautiful. So now we're on the north side of the house on the second floor and we're going to take a look inside room 206 which is our queen suite. This room was presumed to be an office for the original homeowner. As you can see we have a beautiful living room, lots of natural light, again our local art, And then a little queen bedroom nook through this small doorway here. What's interesting is the house right next door, as you can see this red brick with the little stairwell, was built by the family who lived on the north side of the house of this building. So our building was built in 1898, and then they built this home next door in 1907. It was designed by different architects, but the original family's son, Edgar, then lived over in that house. It's just quite amazing to see the differences, but then the fact that the two families basically had this whole half of the block. So in our queen suite, I just want to show you our indi individual air units. So every guest room has its own air unit so that you're not sharing air with any other guest in the hotel. We are now up on the third floor, still on the north side, and we're going to take a look inside of room 306. This room is a classic king. And what's lovely about the third floor is we still have quite nice high ceilings, but we have these angled dormers, which just adds a little extra uniqueness. You can see our beautiful fixtures and how they shine the light up on the ceiling. So every room is quite literally unique and different, and no matter what room you stay in at Double Dutch, you will have a different experience each time. This room is the only room of its kind to have a little secret staircase that goes up to a tiny fourth floor landing. Now, it was said that both sides of the house, the two families, each had two servants that lived here with them in 1898 through about 1920. And this room was part of the servants' quarters. So it's just a little fourth floor landing and there is a skylight. Let me take you up there and show you. For guest safety, we do not allow anyone up on the fourth floor landing. All that's up there is a little roof access through here, some attic crawl space, and then the amazingly unique skylight. Now on the south side of the third floor, I'm going to take a look inside room 303, which is another classic king. It is quite impossible to pick a favorite room, but I would have to say this is one of my favorites due to the unique mirror in the window here. In the bathroom with amazing views as you're up on the third floor. So you can see the Northwestern Mutual Building 
cut a hate tower. As I said, every room is unique and different and has its own qualities that you will not find in any other room. So some of our rooms do have bathtubs. Others have stand-up showers, just depending on the current layout of the room. We have some of this original paneling here. And again, these angled dormers. So around this corner then we will find the beautiful king bed, local artwork, our beautiful rugs by Shabahang and Sons. Every room has one, but everyone is unique and different. Some are newer and some range from up to 50 to 60 years old. But again, this room is just nice and cozy up on the third floor. And the city views from each room are quite beautiful. Hello, wonderful people of Milwaukee and beyond. My name is Kelly Burns. I'm the tavern manager here at the Double Dutch Hotel. Uh, we are a brand new business. The hotel just opened in July 2020 and the tavern opened in December 2020. Great time to open a business, you're telling me, but we're making it work. Uh, we're having fun along the way and we welcome any of you who feel comfortable to come into our building, take a little tour, sip on a cocktail and just enjoy this 120 year old home built in 1898. Uh, it's older than any living person today. So a lot of the original fixtures are still up and it is very cool. So we do take reservations. Uh, our tavern space is spread among three rooms and our capacity is currently 20 people. So um, you can have a pretty distant spaced out experience. We have a private dining room. Just give us a call. Let us know what you want to do with your party and we'll make sure to accommodate you. So with that, I'm going to go through some of the tools that I use to bartend. Um, we have a shaker, two parts, clicks in like that, shake, shake, shake. This will dilute your drinks and it will also uh, emulsify any fruits, citrus that you have in your cocktail and just give it a good work around. You know, you could throw some mint or watermelon into a margarita, shake that up and it's pretty much blended for you. Uh, we also use a jigger. This top part is two ounces, the bottom is one ounce. It also has lines, which measure to an ounce and a half, three quarters of an ounce, half, and one quarter of an ounce. So I always measure my cocktails because you just get the same result every time. Um, some people like to free pour, do your thing, but um, for the sake of serving the same drink every time, just measure. We also have a Hawthorne strainer. This is used to strain cocktails out of a shaker or a stirring glass. Just keeps the ice inside of the container so that you're only getting a cocktail into your glass. Um, next up, we have a muzzler. Absolutely essential in Wisconsin. We all love a good old fashioned or two, right? So grab yourself a muzzler. We also have a bar spoon. This is used to stir cocktails. You can either get a fancy stirring glass like this or you can actually use a pint glass. Um, the key is you just want to have your ice well above the level of uh, the volume of your liquid in the glass so that you can get a nice clean stir and uh, you don't chunk up the ice too much and get too many little bits of ice in your drink. So with that, we will make an egg white cocktail to start. So grab a shaker. We're gonna use fresh lemon juice. This lemon juice is was made today. Um, I would highly, highly recommend juicing your own fruit. It really doesn't take much time or effort and the result is just a lot better than using prepackaged stuff. Um, we're going to put Dewar's rum cask. So this is a scotch that's aged in rum barrels. We're gonna use Nocello walnut liqueur straight out of Italy. We have some simple syrup. This is a turbinado syrup. It's kind of like a brown sugar syrup. And then egg whites. So 
You can use egg whites out of a carton. You can also crack an egg, but it's a little too adventurous for me. I can only handle so much right now. So first up, we're gonna do an ounce and a half of the rum cask scotch right into the shaker. Then we're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of Nocello walnut liqueur. There we go. And three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice. Half an ounce of turbinado syrup. And three quarters of an ounce of egg whites. So the key to making a good whiskey sour or your own version of it is you have to dry shake first. So that really foams up the egg whites and gives that like frothy texture and look to the cocktail. So if anybody's been watching Great British Baking Show like I have been, this is kind of like making meringues, you know, put the egg whites in the container, stir it up till it gets nice, thick and frothy. So once it feels a little bit lighter in the shaker, we pop this open and add some ice. You don't need a ton of ice and also it's best to use bigger cubes. Um, you don't wanna get a lot of dilution in this cause it'll change the texture of the egg white but you just wanna shake it up just enough. That is good. And I'm going to put it in this fancy coop and try to not break anything. Um, grab your strainer, strain right into the glass. See how foamy and delicious that looks. And then for a little fun touch, we're going to put chocolate bitters on the top right there. So just give it a couple dashes. And then you can take a toothpick Swirl that around in the glass. You can start in the middle and we'll move your way out. And there you have it. You have a little uh, chocolate, walnut, rum, whiskey sour. Cheers. Delicious. So if there's anything in this cocktail that you're like, mm, not so much, swap it out with something similar. So this walnut liqueur is pretty sweet and sticky. Um, you could also use like an elderflower liqueur or frangelico, hazelnut liqueur, anything like that. Just swap it right out. The cool thing about cocktails is once you get a build down, um, you know the proportions of a certain cocktail, you just swap out one ingredient for the next, you know, whether it's lemon, lime, orange juice, um, any of the modifiers, any of the spirits. And you can look like a professional in front of your friends and have a cool cocktail party. So next up, we're going to make a cold brew cocktail. If you're like me and you have leftover coffee from this morning and you're thinking it's time to spike it, it sure is. So we're gonna build this one in the glass. We're going to use an ounce of Twisted Path Dark Rum. This is made in Milwaukee. Three quarters of an ounce of Angostura Amaro. Fresh made cold brew. Simple syrup and oat milk. For all those lactose intolerant folks, this stuff is really good. So, I'm gonna do one ounce Angostura, or one ounce of dark rum. And three quarters of an ounce of Angostura Amaro. half an ounce of simple syrup. Then we're gonna do two ounces of cold brew. All right, so then we're gonna add our ice. All the way up to the top. I like to add the cold, or I like to add the oat milk last so you get that nice drizzle effect on the cocktail. There we go. And finally, garnish. Garnish is super important. So we're gonna put a little cocktail cherry and candied ginger on top of this cocktail. And enjoy.
Welcome to the sustainability segment of Discover Double Dutch. I'm Brady, the assistant house manager. Since our three owners purchased the property in October of 2019, sustainability and responsible business practices have guided the decision-making process in the transformation of the historic 1898 mansion into the 17-room boutique hotel that it is today. Our goal has always been to preserve a piece of Milwaukee history by utilizing as much of the original 1898 structure as possible, rather than demolishing the history and starting over brand new. With repairs and updates, much of the original charm of the 1898 mansion can be seen throughout our tavern, common areas, and guest rooms today. As a small business that opened in the middle of a pandemic, we are a huge proponent of supporting other local small businesses in Milwaukee, ranging from locally made toiletries to handmade drinkware Many of our partner's products can be found throughout our hotel and are available for purchase as well. Our mugs are hand sculpted and carved by Jean Wells, the current president of the Wisconsin Designer Craft Council and co-founder of Milwaukee Empty Bowls, an organization that has already raised over $850,000 for food pantries and meal programs in Southeastern Wisconsin. She has also made a custom collection of coffee mugs for collectivo locations in Milwaukee and Madison. And we are fortunate enough to have a custom collection made for us as well. Another Milwaukee artist that we collaborated with is Colleen Drew, a local muralist and decorative painter. Upon entering Double Dutch, you'll notice the meticulously hand-painted walls and ceiling decals. Often misperceived as wallpaper, the walls are actually painted with two different textured paints to give the look of wallpaper. This wall right here was first hand laid in gold leaf and then painted over with the plaster paint Paint strips were ripped off to give that textured look. And then these green walls behind me here uh, were done using the same method minus the gold leaf. And then the ceiling decals throughout Double Dutch are also utilizing hand pressed gold leaf as well. Not one detail was forgotten. We even had our room numbers and signage throughout the hotel painted by a local artist named Michael Serda. We also work with local artists to showcase their art through rotating showcases that display their art in common areas and guest rooms. All of the displayed pieces of art are made available for purchase, and we currently have art on display from John Fatica, Cameron Gunderman, and Ariana Hugert. John states that his work attempts to draw attention to the history of places and to acknowledge that the past and the present can be recognized as existing at the same time. The remnants of earlier paint colors, signs, and patterns on walls and other surfaces are important to him as a way of documenting the history of places and by extension form a link to the people and cultural context of that time. The many layers of paint that reveal both the present state of the painting and its earlier stages are a response to that idea. In Karen Gunderman's paintings, she constructs scenarios combining abstract forms interspersed with narrative elements. Drawing on small moments observed in the natural world and her immediate surroundings, she plays with anomalies and curiosities rooted in natural phenomena. She creates dense and layered surfaces to build environments that suggest tales and stories whose full meaning is just beyond our reach. Ariana states that her painting practice emphasizes community and common spaces in Milwaukee. 
When an interior space is a subject, she considers it to be a scaled-up still life composed of objects that reflect the people that live and work within it. When she moves outdoors, her subject expands to become a portrait of the changing urban landscape. She paints on location primarily in oils, but she also spends time in the studio working out compositions or finishing details. She is a portable painter because she finds the act of painting outside the studio to be richer in human interactions and subject matter that are not adequately captured in photos or even her imagination. She likes to engage in what she calls perceptual inquiry that requires her to be present. She loves color, light, pattern, geometry, and the immersive experience of being surrounded by her subject matter. In each of our rooms, you will find local organic toiletries provided by Franciscan peacemakers, ranging from hand lotion to hand soap to bath bombs. We've also decided to implement refillable dispensers in order to mitigate product waste and plastic waste often generated by traditional single-use hotel toiletries. The mission of Franciscan Peacemakers is to provide a pathway to a sustainable, healthy, safe, and productive life for women engaging in prostitution due to trauma, human sex trafficking, or drug addiction. The Franciscan Peacemakers Social Enterprise, formerly known as Gifts for the Journey, was launched in January of 2013 as a supportive workplace where women in recovery from drug addiction and or sexual exploitation are employed while learning skills in manufacturing, packaging, marketing, sales, and administration. While acquiring the skills they need to earn a living wage, the employees who live at Clare Community have the opportunity to put a percentage of their earnings in a match savings account to begin a strong financial foundation upon their graduation from Clare Community. Franciscan Peacemakers products include soaps, lotions, candles, and bath bombs, beautifully handmade with all natural ingredients by women working together toward individual and collective healing. We are honored to partner with Franciscan Peacemakers to support their wonderful mission and offer their amazing products throughout Double Dutch. Cassandra Alonzo of Alonzo Artistry provides us with our upcycled wine bottles that we utilize for our in-room water vases and glasses. Cassandra primarily works with recycled materials to create a variety of home goods, glassware, and barware. Having opened during the pandemic, we also wanted to work with and support a local laundry and linen service that also opened in the middle of the pandemic. That business is Wash B&B. This Milwaukee startup provides us with professionally washed, pressed, and folded linens and towels each week. Wash B&B only utilizes Oikotech certified linens, offers a linen recycling program, and uses up to 80% less energy and water than traditional in-house laundry operations do. When it comes to sustainability, we here at Double Dutch understand that there is always room for improvement, and we will continue to strive to improve our business practices in order to operate as sustainably and responsibly as possible. Follow our journey through our various social media pages and subscribe to our newsletter for updates and exclusive offers. Thank you for joining Discover Double Dutch. We had a wonderful time creating this event, and we hope you learned more about Double Dutch and our tavern. For more information on our local Milwaukee partners, please refer to the end of this event for our partners' websites and social media pages. Please do not hesitate to reach out with any other questions via call, text, or email.